Hello everyone, I am Mrs. Hema Prabha from the Department of Food Processing and Preservation Technology, Faculty of Engineering, Avinashlingam University for Women, Coimbatore. Today's topic is on food preservation by cooling and in the last module we have seen about the post-harvest handling of foods. But in today's topic, we are going to continue that with the food preservation by cooling. The advent of refrigeration technology in food processing has made a tremendous transformation in the choice and lifestyle pattern of the consumers. Moreover, women emancipation has reduced the kitchen time of women thereby calling in the need for packed foods and ready to serve chill preserved foods. Availability of chilled foods in multiple culinary tastes, wide choice, convenience and ease of operation are the advantages of chilled perishable foods. However, integrity and safety of processing in the food chain right from preliminary processing of raw materials through manufacturing, packaging, retailing and end use by consumers. Therefore, food preservation by cooling has been the most striking development in the arena of processed foods. Let us look about the objectives after going through this session. After going through this session, you will be able to substantiate on the various aspects of preservation by cooling and deduce the safety and quality issues involved in chilled foods preservation. Let us discuss about the principle of cooling. Cooling is defined as the process of reducing the temperature of a product to a particular storage temperature that would be from 0 to 4 degrees Celsius to reduce the microbiological load and decrease the biochemical changes thereby extending the shelf life of the stored product. Therefore, cooling does not prevent or stop the growth of pathogenic microbes but only delays the growth of microbes. Increase in temperature causes a logarithmic increase in the biochemical changes and microbiological changes which directly affects the quality and product shelf life. Reduction in temperature therefore retards the respiration rate in fresh commodities and inhibits the growth of enzymatic and microbiological changes. Moreover, deteriorative chemical reactions including enzyme catalyzed oxidative browning or oxidation of lipids and chemical changes associated with color degradation, autolysis in fishes and loss of nutritive value of foods in general and moisture losses could be prevented at cold temperatures. Chilling is also used for non-preservative purposes such as crystallization, aging of beef, wine and cheese and to facilitate such operations such as spitting of cherries and peaches, cutting of meat and slicing of birds etc. Let us look into the significance of low temperature preservation. In modern industry which makes use of cooling as an effective means to extend the shelf life of a variety of perishable foods, commercial and household refrigeration unit effectively maintained at low freezing temperatures which preserve the desirable characteristics of perishable foods for a reasonable period of time. The reduced temperature retards the growth of spoilage microorganisms such as bacteria, yeast and molds. For good refrigeration, the temperature should be lower than 7.5 degrees Celsius but high enough to keep the food from freezing. The preservation of perishables by refrigeration involves the use of low temperature as a means of eliminating or retarding the activity of spoilage agents. The storage of perishables at low temperatures greatly reduces the activity of both enzymes and microorganisms thereby providing a practical means of preserving perishables in their original fresh state for varying periods of time. Oxidation and hydrolysis are controlled by placing the product under refrigeration. For the purpose of preservation, food products can be grouped into two general categories. One will be those which are alive at the time of distribution and storage and the second one are the category 
those which are not that is non living food substances with non living food substances the problem of preservation is one of protecting the dead tissue from all the forces of purification and decay both enzymatic and microbial in the case of living food substances such as fruits and vegetable the food substance should be kept alive at the same time retarding natural enzymic activity in order to slow the rate of maturation or ripening the degree of low temperature required for adequate preservation always varies with the type of the product stored and with the length of time the product to be kept in storage the categories of chill foods can be the categorization can be done according to the temperature range of storage chilled products that is the first one the temperature of storage ranging from minus 1 degree celsius to plus 1 degree celsius for fleshy foods like meat and marine products poultry products etc temperature of storage ranging from 0 degree celsius to 5 degree celsius for dairy products like milk butter yogurt and pre processed foods like pasta goods soup mixes baked products like breads pastries pizzas etc the third category of temperature of storage is ranging from 0 degree celsius to 8 degree celsius for completely cooked fleshy foods like meat poultry fish and fish products fruits and vegetables etc finally for the fresh crops there are many factors that determine the temperature of storage the prime factor being the edible part of the plant and its rate of respiration the plant part at the right stage that respires more has the highest metabolism and very short shelf life the first kind are the plant tissues including fruits vegetables seeds and nuts in chill food products the major ingredients are fresh fruits and vegetables they may be used wholly or peeled or in minimally processed forms in products like salads or mixed fruit packs therefore quality maintenance of the products is essential and this is possible only through proper preservation of the fresh fruits or vegetables the most important characteristic of harvested intact plant tissues is the persistence of aerobic respiration throughout the storage life of the product aerobic respiration involves metabolism of carbohydrates and organic acids in the presence of atmospheric oxygen with the ultimate production of carbon dioxide water heat and small amounts of organic volatiles and other substances for maximum storage life of plant tissues at chilling temperatures it is desirable that aerobic respiration should be allowed to continue at a slow rate so that the maintenance processes and associated with life continue to function and the natural protective coatings which hinder invasion of microbes remain intact then the temperature also be suitably low so that major deteriorative reactions are slowed as much as possible when the keeping quality of various fruits and vegetables are compared an association is often found between the rate of respiration and rate of quality loss that is the commodities that normally respire rapidly often have short storage lives for crops possessing respiration rates more than 17 the recommended period of storage is 2 days at 2 degree celsius but when the respiration rate is from 1 to 2 only the harvested produce can be stored for 6 months to 1 year at the same temperature from the data as given in the table this relationship is evident from the data as given in the table the most of the rapidly respiring which is expressed in terms of heat evolution commodities on the left half of the table are highly perishable at constant temperatures species exhibit large differences in rates of respiration and to the amount of heat generated is sufficient to influence refrigeration requirements thus 
any calculation of respiration, sensible heat of the product and heat leakage into the storage facility. When temperature reduction is used to slow the rate of aerobic respiration, this usually delays the senescence and decay of plant tissues except for those susceptible to chilling injury and enable some fruits to be ripened at control rates. In addition to large difference in the rates at which various plant tissues respire, a given tissue frequently does not respire at a constant rate when held at a constant temperature. The climactic maximum frequently but not always occur at optimum ripeness of the fruit and the sharp decline in respiration rate following the maximum is often associated with over maturity that is a stage referred to as senescence or the rate of growing old. Thus, the climactic maximum can be thought of as a point dividing the growth and maturation from deterioration and death. The exact nature of the harvested commodities is to be considered in preservation by cooling, namely the time of the harvest, duration and extent of rise of the respiration curve produced by the fruits which exhibit a climacteric phase that varies greatly depending on the species, size, variety, maturity and environmental conditions. Fruits in general are harvested when fully matured and either ripe or unripe. Harvesting in an unripe state is often done with fruits that are capable of ripening during storage, particularly with those fruits that are not soft when ripe and with those that retain optimum ripeness for only a relative short period. For example, bananas, avocados, pears. Vegetables are frequently harvested when immature, tender and succulent. Coming to the fleshy foods. Fleshy foods like meat, poultry and marine products are used in the natural form only for the preliminary cleaning step and the removal of the viscera. The need for chilled storage is predominant in the case of fleshy foods since there is an emerging trend towards convenience meals and RTS products using fleshy foods. The slaughter of animal results in disruption of the natural protective coating and curtailment of most activities common to life. A major consequence is that the tissues are left with none of the life processes which formerly resisted deterioration. Last is the ability to resist invasion by microorganisms, an ability so effective in living animals that many interior tissues exist in a sterile or near sterile condition. The internal supply of oxygen is rapidly diminished and aerobic respiration ceases causing the pH to fall from a physiological value from 7 to value ranging from about 5.1 to 6.5. In spite of these biochemical changes in fleshy foods, the storage life is well maintained in low temperature preservation. Talking about the milk and milk products which is the next category of products under chill preservation. Milk being a highly perishable commodity requires a cold chain management right from receiving until it is used by the consumer. It should also be handled under strict sanitary conditions and be promptly cooled. Pasteurized milk, toned milk and sterilized milk also necessitate the use of chilled temperature due to its high perishability. Products like chilled desserts, mousses, creams, puddings, etc. utilize milk as their basic ingredient that contribute to the special flavor, texture, variety, color and viscosity. The aerated structure and the golden yellow tinge in custard deserts demands the addition of milk. However, the demand and hence its production of traditional chilled dairy products is increasing. Next, let us look about the different cooling methods and the temperatures applied for the cooling. Cooling is a mandatory storage method that should be applied to fruit and vegetables 
to maintain a fresh like quality and for shelf life extension. Chilling utilizes air systems as primary medium of cooling because it is flexible, economical, inert and versatile in applications. The various types of systems are air in motion, humid air, air in direct contact with food, vacuum and pressurized air etc. Cryogens immersion systems are also used for higher efficiency and control chilling. The first one being the air systems. The air systems include the utilization of different types of fans right from the most basic fan that supplies cool air across the refrigerated coil to spiral or blast tunnels inside the storage area. For large and conveyorized continuous chilling systems are employed. For products placed in trays or packed products, a simpler batch type cooling structure is engaged. Next comes the pre-cooling where safe transportation of fruits and vegetable that requires pre-cooling at a temperature of 3 degree to 6 degree Celsius is done. Cold air, cold water hydrocooling, direct contact with ice or by evaporation of water from the product under a partial vacuum cooling are the different pre-cooling methods. A combination of cooled air and water in the form of a mist called hydrocooling is an innovation in cooling of fruits and vegetables. Next is pre-cooling by the use of air. The most commonly practiced method of pre-cooling of fruits is with cold air. Refrigerator cars, storage rooms, tunnels or forced air coolers are the different methods of air pre-cooling. The next topic is icing where an ice slurry containing 60% finely crushed ice, 40% water and 0.1% sodium chloride to lower the melting point or crushed ice placed directly on top of the crop is practiced in this method. The next method is room cooling where a refrigeration unit in which cold air is passed through a fan is constructed in a room where the crop is placed. Air convection blowers are used to blow air across the top of the room through the produce. The main advantage is the low cost since no specific maintenance facility is required. Next comes forced air cooling. The principle behind this type of pre-cooling is to place the crop into a room where cold air is directed through the crop after flowing over various refrigerated metal coils or pipes. Forced air cooling systems blow air at a high velocity leading to the desiccation of the crop. To minimize this effect, various methods of humidifying the air cooling have been designed such as blowing the air through cold water sprays, etc. Next important topic is hydrocooling where the cooling of crops with cold water results in faster transmission of heat from the producers and hence results in zero loss of weight. If the crop is submerged in cold water or transported around the pack house in water where the transport can incorporate a hydrocooler to cool the produce, a higher efficiency could be attained. Chlorinated water can also be used to prevent spoilage as well as to clean the crop. Hydrocooling is applied for vegetables like sweet corn, radish, carrots and rarely used for fruits. The next method of cooling is vacuum cooling where cooling under vacuum for every 5 or dig sorry Cooling under vacuum conditions where for every 5 or 6 degree reduction in temperature, the crop loses about 1% of its weight in vacuum cooling. The weight loss may be reduced by spraying the produce with water either in the initial stages or towards the end of the vacuum cooling operation termed as hydrovacuum cooling. This method is particularly suitable for leaf crops such as Lettuce. Crops like tomatoes having a relatively thick wax cuticle are not suitable for vacuum cooling. The important points to be discussed for efficient cooling can be discussed as follows.
to avoid cross contamination from one product to another primary packaging of the products prior to chilling is mandatory final packaging may be done just prior to shipping to avoid microbial infestation or chilling injury in the product hygienic practices and cleanliness of the chilling area and equipment is to be practiced strictly the conditions of exposure of the packed products prior to and during the chilling process predominantly influence the pathogen growth and shelf life of the food product for instance fleshy foods that are frozen are subjected to thawing or tempering before they are used in the production of value added products or convenient rte foods further these products are frozen or chilled throughout the distribution chain during storage various levels of distribution until it reaches the consumer thus we find that multiple factors influence the shelf life of chilled foods now let us discuss about the various factors driving the full now let us discuss about the various factors driving the chilled food sector the global emerging changes in the lifestyle pattern of the masses has resulted in increasing in the working women population who spend less time in home cooking nearly 60% of the women folk are employed all over the world and this is the prime reason for the remarkable increase in snacking habits and consumption of microwaveable foods and chilled foods convenience in consuming chill preserved foods that could be prepared in very less time is another significant factor that contributes towards the growth of chill preserved foods warning of traditional foods and the skills employed in the preparation of such foods is also an important reason for the growth of chilled foods preservation through chilling is made easy with the advent of refrigeration in every domestic kitchen this has enabled the snacking habits in and also prompted the consumers to eat small frequent meals at different times of the day so the lookout for lighter foods ingredients for quick practices has made a steadfast increase in the use of chilled preserved foods the interest of the consumer in diet foods and the composition and function of the ready made foods has demonstrated a great improvement in the safe production and healthy ingredients in manufacturing these chilled foods as a consequence minimal usage of chemical preservatives and maximum natural ingredients is in vogue among manufacturers the renewed emphasis of consumers towards international flavors and cuisines has fueled the extension of chilled dessert market intensification of competition in ready to eat foods market and rapid local producers value added production has also made an impact in the progress in the ready to eat foods market in short the major players that contribute to the successful growth of the ready to eat chill foods market are convenience in usage prevalence of snacking habits interest towards healthy eating availability of variety in taste and choice of rte foods multi cuisine and flavorful rte foods increasing competition to conclude this topic on preservation by cooling let us recall whatever we have discussed so far preservation of foods by cooling is one of the oldest techniques that apply low temperature for shelf life extension it became a popular technique since the advent of ammonia refrigeration system in 1875 it is a boon to the agro food industry particularly perishable foods cooling is defined as a process of reducing the temperature of a product to a particular storage temperature from 0 degree to 4 degree celsius to reduce the microbiological load and decrease the biochemical changes thereby extending the shelf life of the stored product chilling is also used for non preservative purposes such as crystallization aging of beef wine and cheese and to facilitate such operations such as pitting of cherries and peaches cutting of meat and slicing of bread etc for good refrigeration the temperature should be lower than 7.5 degrees celsius but high enough to keep the food from freezing 
According to the temperature range of stored chill foods are classified into temperature of storage ranging from minus 1 degree Celsius to plus 1 degree Celsius for fleshy foods, from 0 degree Celsius to plus 5 degree Celsius for dairy products and from 0 degree Celsius to plus 8 degree Celsius for completely cooked fleshy foods for completely cooked fleshy foods like meat and poultry, fruits and vegetables etc. Chilling preservation is much preferred because of its economic reasons, flexibility and versatility in applications. Moreover, change in lifestyle patterns and eating habits among the growing population has made an indelible mark in the growth of the chill food industry. Thank you.